Uh, I'm screwing this up right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Above the Bar podcast, a show about a middle-aged father, current events, and how these things affect my everyday life. Alrighty, folks, welcome to another episode of the Above the Bar podcast. This is part two of our distiller series. Just a reminder, I got into this one because I watched the documentary on Hulu called Neat, and I thought this was pretty wild. So put the word out there on Facebook and on LinkedIn, who knows any distillers. And uh, this this one came from a good friend of mine, another Marine I've known, uh, as we say in the Marine Corps, since Christ was a corporal. Uh, snuff daddy reached out and said, uh, Murph, I got somebody for you. We can make this happen. Look, he's already, he's already given it a woot woot. So, uh, today we have Roger Morantz with Marlin and Barrel Distillery. Roger, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. So now make sure I got this right. This is your launch year, right? So we actually just reopened. So <clears throat> we, uh, we moved we moved six blocks from our original location. And uh, whether it's six blocks or 600 miles, I never want to do that again. So, uh, you know, starting a distillery, easy, moving hard. We were like Noah's Ark with barrels, two by two on our forklift, six blocks. <laughs> moved them all to our new location. So uh, plus the paperwork, plus the opening, plus, plus, plus. So, yeah. So, so for us, it's a, it's a relaunch. We, we actually, uh, we worked on, on the opening for, I don't know, the better part of a year. And, uh, the, the, uh, city was the last, um, they were the long pole in the tent and they gave us a call on, uh, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving at about three 30 in the afternoon. And if you know the liquor business, you know that people like to buy booze for the holidays. And so it was a really big deal for us to get open for the holidays. And they called us right before that, and uh, they said, you're good to go. And I didn't know if I was <laughs> laugh or cry or throw up. So uh, we opened officially again on Black Friday, soft opening. And we're still actually, um, we're still going to do a ribbon cutting and a, a formal grand opening and, and all of that. But yeah, we are, uh, we are open. We're, we're producing. Um, we still have, we still have uh, paint and finish things. We've got a still to connect st- um, still. So they're still. We'll still to still connect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's still work, but, um, but we're, we're doing our thing. And, um, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever had any kind of like separation from their normal routine in life for an extended period, but when you get back to doing what you do, it feels, it feels so good. So we're excited about it. And then, um, so we, that was black Friday. And then, uh, uh, about a month later, our bourbon turned four years old, which is a really big deal. It's a no age statement product. So, okay. uh, so, so we opened, we had the bourbon, we, uh, we just had an event for the first time. And so, you know, we're getting our, our sea legs under us again. So now is that a bond? Cause I'm just learning, I'm learning words that I never knew I, I needed to learn. So is that a, since it's four years old, that makes it a bonded bourbon, right? So, 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 uh, we could offer bonded as a product type. So, you know, a long time ago, I guess l- l- let me take a half step back if you don't mind. So yeah, sure. So we make we make a lot of products. I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit, but we make a rum and 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 a, a whiskey and a bourbon. And and so uh, w- rum doesn't have a lot of high standards in terms of label requirements, but whiskey and bourbon sure do. And so um, part of the reason is, um, you know, uh, when whiskey got going in this nation, you know, there was a lot of um, I think there was some measure enough enough unscrupulous characters that uh, that you never know what you got you know in the barrel shipped down the Mississippi or whatever. So so uh, so the the bonded idea was a was a congressional act that uh, 
required for you to have a, a bonded product. It had to come from your distillery. It had to be 100 proof, and it had to be um, aged um, for four years. And so you knew when you had a bonded product, it was like the real deal. You, you, got, a, you got a good full bottle of, of, of booze in, in there. Um, and it was a way to kind of strengthen what distillers were doing in a legal, in a legal sense. So you got a decent, you know, decent product. Um, uh, today, most, I, I would guess most bourbon that's sold is not bonded. It's, it's in the 80 proof version, 84, 86, 90, 90 you know, some, so on and so on. Um, so anything under a hundred proof is not a bonded product, even though it comes from a bonded warehouse. I'm, I'm currently in our distillery and looking 20 something feet across our tasting room into our bonded space. So which that you're in there right now. I'm in our tasting room right now. Yep. Okay. And, uh, and our tasting room is a kind of an adjunct in the building to our actual production facility. So, um, cause I was like in the background, I was already seeing, I was like, man, that's, I thought that was the bar inside the house. I was thinking for a minute. I was like, man, that's pretty impressive. I'd, I'd never get my kids up in the morning. <laughs> I, look, I have moments when I don't want to get mine up to start with, you know, <laughs> only, I, only Monday through Friday. That's how I feel oh about it. God. So we, you were generous enough to provide us with a couple of these things. So as you can tell them, I'm, I'm a little salivating already. So next week we've got another distiller. So we kind of stepped this process through. So last week, I don't know if you caught last week or not. Um, those guys, they've, they've started to bottle, but they haven't released yet. You were my released and we're, we're getting back into the groove of things. And then next week we've got a group that's coming yep. on. That's been doing it for a good fair amount of time up here in, in New York, but I've never, and I've got my son with me sitting to my right. Uh, my, my twin, neither one of us have ever had a bloody Mary. No, oh. <laughs> I've just never, you know, I, I, I'm not a, like when I day drink, it's not, you know, I always just think of it like a day drinker, like, yeah. uh, what, like a brunch kind of thing. Yeah, sure. so, so I, Sunday, Sunday brunch. Right. Yeah. So, so tell us, so we've got this one here. This is your venture vodka. It's yeah. all, so it's, are you doing small batch stuff? Cause I see this one's got a one Oh four on it. Yeah. And then we've got, tell, tell me about this. Uh, the hot sauce folks also. Yeah. Yeah. That? So, so everything we do here is, is small batch. I mean, you know, it's funny to me when we see big liquor labels say small batch, you know, it's like five our production. <laughs> so it's all, you know, it's all relative, right? Whatever you say, small batch is it's small batch. But for us, right. you know, if you, if you put a, a 150 bottles together in a batch that, that feels small batch to me. So, so, so everything we do is small batch. We, you know, we've got, we've got, I guess, bourbon in full 53 gallon barrels, but we're only going to pop the cork on one, not like a hundred. So yeah. So it's all small batch. Um, for us, um, the pepper vodka is actually in house. It's our number one seller. Really? Uh, yeah. It's our number one seller. Now we do, we do, uh, we do liquor in every major liquor category except tequila or agave spirits. We, you know, we can't do spirit tequila and okay. and okay. What's the difference between a spirit? So we do, we do whiskey, bourbon, gin, vodkas, rums. Our cellos are are liqueur. There are many liqueurs, but that's that's at least in in the category. We just don't do anything from the agave plant. So so basically, ah. except that. Um, the, uh, the, the majority of our products are flavor rich products. Now, let me see. I sent you a cello, which is flavorful. I sent you a pepper, which is a flavored vodka. And I think I sent you a flavored rum also. So we were going to, I've got to ask you, so this is the blossom and I yep. don't, I, my son and I were talking about, it. so believe it or not, I am the, the child of a, my parents owned a liquor store and a bar as I was growing up as a kid. And I'm not talking like a little like neighborhood corner bar. I'm talking like it had a dance floor. It had a raw bar, like the whole nine yards. And the bar actually had a liquor store attached to it. Also separate from the other one that they owned. Yeah. So I grew up with around, but I don't, I couldn't tell you what makes it a liqueur 
and what makes it because like my dad was a big drambuie drinker. Yeah. So I couldn't tell you what makes something a liqueur and what makes something not a regular liquor. Yeah. So 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 you'll notice the proof's a little lower on the tangerine. Tan tangelo is what I sent you. Okay. And the tangerines actually the fruit we use actually come from our backyard here on Amelia Island. It's so our legit. Like legit from Florida. Yep, we hand zest all the fruit, all that all of that. And so uh, and so it's basically think of this like a vodka base, high high proof vodka is a neutral spirit. Okay. We had a flavor agent which is which are the oils from the zest of the fruit in this case it's tangerine uh and then uh you bring it to proof and and uh, sweeten it which is the liqueur part so it has like a simple sugar to it so it's got alcohol the zing of the acidic flavorful tangerine and then a sweetness to it and for us we make four tangerines we do a lemon lime we do a tangerine we do an orange and we do a, a grapefruit the 800 pound category or 800 pound grill in the category is really wow. limoncello, but we're not Italians. We're for So we do the other, the other things that we can do with the product. Okay. And, and when you taste it, it will be and compared to traditional limoncellos. It'll be about 60% of the sugars by design. That's our preference. A little more of the alcohol, the strength of the alcohol. It lets the flavor of the fruit shine rather than dull it with the sugars. And, uh, and just a little bit, you know, chill it. You should, you know, on ice or keep the bottle in the freezer or the fridge or whatever. And um, it's just super. The, the thing is with all of our products and we make a lot of products, there's no chem lab here. Everything with flavor comes from a natural food stock and that shines through in the spirit. So um, that's, I think, and we're not the only ones like that. I think a lot of craft distillers, if they're really crafting something, in my opinion, you're going to get that thing that you really can't do at scale. And that's 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 our way forward as, as you know as a as a niche market. You can smell like so. This is the vodka. If you can see it, folks. You yeah, my fancy glasses. This is my, oh wait, is my, that pepper vodka? This is the pepper vodka. I have my son made. I told you, neither one of us have ever had a Bloody Mary. He made his first Bloody Mary. It's sitting next to me with Warn a very appropriate glass. Warning, that's too much. <laughs> I wasn't going to shoot this. <laughs> is it, it, it going to like burn my ass? Is that like the hot sauce side to it? So, so we use a bird, B I R D, bird pepper. It grows grows great here. It's it's uh, it's uh, I don't know if it's truly native or whatever, but it's it's something that you can find here in Florida. And we smoke those peppers. Wait, hold on, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> he did. It. I haven't drank anything yet. <laughs> you can't see my son, whose face just turned red. And he got red hair, so his shit's matching right now. And he's walking around the bar. Like, is it spicy, son? Yeah. Come around. Come around. Come see your father. Come to my I've had enough people at the tasting bar. I know what he looks like. The, I, nobody yeah. else does. Get in there. Yeah. Get in the camera. So, yeah. Plug. <laughs> wait a second. So I'm about to taste this shit. Am I about to get jacked up? So, it, so two comments. It's a lot of flavor and a lot of... Immediate heat, but it is not a punitive heat. It will not continue to build. It will not continue to punish you. You won't be searching for milk, you know. Uh, look, Chris, you're an alcoholic. I've known you long enough to know this shit. Hey, but 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 it takes a lot of heat to cut through the tomato for a Bloody Mary. Tomatoes. Holy are shit! <laughs> oh my god! Whoa. We normally start fellows. Here at the like, table. Oh my god! Like that straight fucking hot sauce. I just shot Tabasco. Yeah, you're welcome. Wow, wow. And what's funny is, is so like I got the heat instantaneously on my tongue. Like there was no bullshitting around. Nothing. I got that heat right away. And but there was like a a sweetness. Yeah. Associate. What's the sweetness? It's the meat of the fruit. Oh. Yeah, or the, the pepper, sorry. Okay. A little smokiness around around also. Yeah, oh. absolutely. Yeah. I, I have to go ahead because if y'all haven't figured it out, Roger was a prior service guy also. I I, 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 like wore, I wore camo for you for you. He so. wore camo. But I I did this the last time. I'll have to do this for you. Do you know what Army stands for? Uh oh. No. Aren't ready for Marines yet. 
<laughs> and and Robert just Vansenberg just chimed in. He's a good friend of mine. He's a, a prior army guy that I harass at every moment. Anytime we see each other. Oh, so let's try. So this will be my first Bloody Mary also. Oh, much. So, let, so let's see. Now, see, I like that. Yeah. That, see, now that heat. Yeah. Isn't as bad with the Bloody Mary. It yeah. almost tastes like, uh, so from the shot, like taste that, son. Yeah. Just taste that. So the big difference in the two is when you have just the Bloody Mary, it's more like the pepper, like peppery. Yeah. Because of the tomato. Whereas in the the shot, it was more like a straight, like right to your right to your uh, tongue kind of thing. I like that. Thanks. Oh, we, that's, we, that's cool. we do see people sometimes, but, you know, a lot of people really do like heat. They like the pepper. Right. But they'll have like a, instead of a normal vodka tonic, they'll have the smoked pepper vodka tonic oh okay up it loosens it loosens it a little bit um it's not so uh you know dramatic and yeah, that's different yeah they'll just nip on it <laughs> chris it, said i popped my tree as you wish it holds do you feel it still it holds yeah right right so it's that's why i say it's more of like a uh like a peppery t- i don't want to say tabasco yeah no it's different it's not that vinegary because I always think of Tabasco and I think more of the vinegary kind of taste to it. Yep. But we you trying to, my son's pacing like he's trying to decide. <laughs> you okay? Are you all right? <laughs> in, I love in, abusing my, I like to abuse my children. This is, this is good for me. So you guys just broke the seal. You're now bloody, you know, you've had Bloody Marys. But for Bloody Mary fans, most of them will add heat to their 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 concoction so okay for us it's just two ingredients like a a mix and then the vodka and then it's it it it, you know people generally like the heat um with with the uh with with the cocktail so and that's what makes a good cocktail a balance you know a balance between alcohol flavor texture you know everything so so why am i putting celery in this thing i don't even know why you know, so celery is just like uh, something you can chew on to kind of reset the palate. Okay. Because, like, yeah. I see these Bloody Marys on TV, and they're like, there's, like, a turkey hanging out of it and, like, a lobster and, like, crazy. out of control. It's crazy. We're, we're, we haven't announced it yet, so I, I guess I'm breaking news. But, but here, where we're at, a long time ago, bars used to compete, uh, do a Bloody Mary competition. And we're going to sponsor another competition. Nice. In March. And uh, it's crazy. It's so creative what people can do. And I think part of it's a cocktail and part of it's whatever sits on top of the cocktail. And it's kind of fun, you know, so. Now, see, one of my favorite Florida drinks is out in Pensacola because I love Picola. Yeah. Is uh, And we're going to get into something because I have a connection to your neck of the woods also, um, mm. is the Jubilee mm. out there. They have like a whole festival, a yep. whole nine yards in Picola. Now, you're in Fernandina, right? We are. Yep, just north of Jacksonville. If you've never been to Fernandina, folks, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend to go into St. Augustine. It is amazing area. It's beautiful out there. You definitely uh, have to get out down there and see Marlin and Barrel. Check out the distillery. But you're going to laugh in a moment, Roger. So you hear my – this is a mid-Atlantic accent, mm-hmm. if you haven't figured it out yet. It's not southern. But I have roots. My grandmother used to live in Yuli. Oh, across the bridge. And I still have cousins that live in the country. Now, look, I have family in, in off the base of Rome Mountain in Elizabethan, Tennessee, near Black Bottom. Yeah. It doesn't sound much more country than that. But I'm going to mention two places to Roger, and we'll see if he how country he thinks these are. I have family in Callahan and Hilliard. <laughs> <laughs> See, look, he couldn't even say anything. <laughs> so, so, so I think Callahan's got a grocery store now. Oh, that's impressive. Or they're getting one, but, <laughs> but <laughs> and I, I don't think I don't think, Hilliard. I don't. They don't have a Piggly Wiggly even. I mean, I think it's really just still at. I mean, maybe a Family Dollar. I don't. Well, I don't everything's know. got a Family Dollar. Well, <laughs> let's say the lot, the average lot size is a little larger out there. 
<laughs> the 301 speed trap bill. <laughs> yeah. Drove it the other day. It's uh Oh you <laughs> is it bad? Well, yeah, you know. Yeah. I, I we we're unique. I mean, but I'll tell you, my, my aunt wanted it. Uh she passed away many moons ago, loved her to death. The we didn't talk about country folk. She made the world's best fried chicken gravy. Mm. Like it was like drinking fried chicken. It was mm. amazing. That's my mom's side of the family. They're, they're very, like, my family's very different. So my mom's side of the family is super country. My dad's side of the family are all, like, they are. there's a big group of them in North Carolina. Uh, but they're much more, uh, like, grew up in Baltimore City kind of stuff, things of that nature. It, it's <laughs> notorious. You have no idea how notorious they are. Now we're going to get into, now we've done this. We've done, let's see, who's it? Oh. Your wife, your wife is on this. <laughs> Hi, Heather. Heather, I was hoping that you would you would get a chance to come on here, but I, I understood your reasoning for sending Roger away. You know, I understand. We needed we have to have bar talk at a bar. I get it. Completely accept this. But so now, other than so so this vodka is more of a mixer. And uh one of our you know celebrity guests. Asked a great question, Amanda Love is, and, and I might have missed it, and I apologize if I did. What other is it? Just this vodka, or do you have grouped vodkas? What you know? We do four vodkas. We have a uh, we have a standard, um, uh, crisp, clean, neutral vodka, which that I think when you, when people just think of vodka, they think of you know maybe a vodka from its you know Polish or Russian traditions. That, that kind of thing where where it's just uh, it's smooth to drink and just the warmth, the afterglow of the spirit hits you, hits you, you know, uh, at the end. So we have one of those. We actually have a uh, what we call a craft vodka. We call it craft because um, it is made from the sugars of molasses. And it's super hard because of how many fusel oils are in the actual base of molasses. If you think about what molasses is, it okay. is oily substance. And it's very difficult to extract all of that in either the distillation or post-distillation filtration process. So there's a touch of sweetness and the essence of molasses in, in the vodka. Now, the way the, the way the code reads is uh, vodka should be flavorless, odorless, uh, you, you know, flavorless and odorless, but that's subjective. So, you know, your palate might pick up something mine doesn't. And if you taste the difference between potato or wheat or corn based vodkas, you know, there's, there are, there are subtle differences. So, so, so anyways, we have a, a craft vodka. We only sell it in house and it, it almost starts with the su sweetness of rum because it comes from molasses, but it finishes with that warmth at the end. And to be honest, it's crazy. It will not work in the marketplace because it's probably a standard deviation of out of what people expect but here it's like a cult following people come after me with pitchforks if i don't have it in stock it's like a really i don't know it's like the same thing so so we have that so that's two we have the pepper vodka and then in our area we grow we grow um well obviously we have lemons and we have uh in this area a ton of blueberries in southern georgia really? and in, in uh from kind of central to north florida so we do a blueberry lemon zest vodka uh, that's our vodka lineup now that sounds that sounds pretty amazing. Super know. refreshing. There's a ton of the natural um, flavor once again that comes out. We again zest the uh, fruit for the um, and it and it you know blueberry. It's not like a obviously it's not like a sure, a high sugar content fruit. There's a touch of sweetness to it, but then the zip of the lemon zest helps balance that, and it's just a great combination. We just you know come. I mean we're warm weather ten out of twelve months down here, so it's like a super refreshing. Uh, vodka ingredient for a lot of cocktails. So that that sounds good. Now, um, we're gonna get ready. We're gonna get in because I have so many thoughts for this rum. Because <laughs> I love the idea that it's vanilla bean espresso flavored rum. Um, they don't do much for. So I love conven good convenience stores. I know that might sound crazy to say, but living outside of Philadelphia and living in Baltimore. We had Royal Farm in Baltimore, which does the most amazing fried chicken, and Wawa is just amazing. I know you guys have some down there in Florida. My son used to live in Boca, and they had one there. But what they do have here is Stewart's, and Stewart's has the most amazing cream soda. Mm. 
And all mm. I could think of was like how amazing this rum would be in some cream soda. Take a look at this, folks. This is, again, espresso, vanilla bean es express, es espresso. That's my accent again. Espresso. And, and we're, we're doing the small batch again. This is batch 70. That even looks, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that somebody's pen? This looks, could be mine. Hold on. Because I just realized, like, at first I thought it was, like, printed on there. Oh. And I just realized it, like, that's an indention. Yep. Wow. We hand label, we, hand label, we fill bottle by bottle, and uh, and we got, a, we got a little whiteboard with every batch. So, you know, the next batch after seven is 71. We erase it. We put 71 on the board, so on and so forth. Now, what define – now, this is kind of – because I want to hear more about, about the rums because my son, he lived – he lives in Puerto Rico half half the year. Mm -hmm. So he brought me up, uh, and I'd never even heard of this, a Puerto Rican sipping rum. Yeah. And, and that was really good, and we enjoyed that. I've got, you know, I've I've had Captain, and I've had this one yep. and that one. Uh, one that I really liked that I had a long time ago was called Tartuga. Yeah. Um, and so I've had different rums, but with something like this, what, I guess... Well, let's start with what makes a rum a rum. Sure. So rum is a uh, distilled product that comes from um, sugars of, of the sugar cane stock. So what does that mean? So fresh pressed sugar cane. We grow some down here. I actually just met uh, about two weeks ago a guy who uh, farms and then has all the pressing equipment. So I think next season we're going to do a fresh pressed um uh, a rum from fresh pressed juice. A lot, a lot of distillers don't do it because it starts to naturally ferment right away. It's just like ready to go. Uh, oh, rum is uh, fresh pressed. Oh, okay. Most rum that's ever been produced really comes from molasses. So uh, refineries will fresh press the juice. They'll put it in a vat. They'll heat it. They'll they'll spin it. They'll extract the thing that becomes white sugar. And as soon as they take any measure of sugar out of that fresh pressed juice the rest becomes some type of molasses grade a do it more grade b do it more grade c and uh and blackstrap molasses is at this generic point where no more sugar will come out what kind of molasses blackstrap <laughs> okay so all of our rums have a blackstrap molasses <laughs> and uh i'm sorry <laughs> I'm, I'm i never made it past 13 <laughs> So, so, you know, well, it was the proof vodka you had. I didn't, I didn't uh, juice the bottle. So uh, all your, all your <laughs> rum has, has a black strap, huh? Right uh, on it. Is it right on, is it right on the, <laughs> right on the, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I told you, I'm, I didn't make it past 13. So we do a light rum, which a lot of fruity rum drinks come from. We do a sipping rum, which is an aged rum. We do a pineapple. We do a hundred mm. Three proof, 53 is the highest proof allowed in the state of Florida. And then we do this vanilla bean espresso rum, which people, I think, either drink as a cordial or they're going to mix it with like, um, yeah, it's like it's like a black Russian alternative kind of, kind of uh, element. Rum is sweet, vanilla is sweet, but espresso is bitter, right? So again, there's a balancing act going on inside the, 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 uh, the, the beverage. Um, it kills actually in December because people add it with eggnog. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. So, um, John, this is a rum he's, we're talking about. We're talking about rums. That's right. He, well, he asked, is this whiskey or rum we're talking about? I said rum. But, you know, so this has, like, the best way I can describe it, like the aftertaste to it, reminds me of chewing on a coffee bean. Yeah. Like, as a kid, my mom would, like have like the whole coffee beans or buy the, the chocolate covered coffee beans. Yeah. And, and that's what it reminds me of is, uh, is that coffee bean kind of flavor. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, you know, the thing is you can get like coffee vodkas and you can get co certainly coffee liqueurs, but they're all just like super sweet, doped up, you know, sugar doses. That is alcohol and the espresso essence. Yeah. Yeah, tequila. Somebody does a tequila also. Yeah. But rum has a natural sweetness, I think, that balances with the, the espresso. Yeah, absolutely. Espresso, that, that, that aftertaste. Like, if you really enjoy coffee and espresso, that's what you want. 
you want that aftertaste. You want the glow of that. So, and it and it doesn't. You know what I like about this, and I've had it with some rums where like you really get the rot gut to it. You know what I mean? Like the military special. Do you yeah. remember those from? This is like. I got the I got the first little bite from from the initial sip of it, like you do with any kind of liquor. Yep. But this after that, it's you could sip on this, you can enjoy this. This isn't gonna, you know, wreck your whole, you know, ability. You're not it's not one of these I guess the best way is we've all done it where somebody hands you a drink and you're like they're like, This is amazing, it's so good, it's so smooth, and you sip it and you're like Oh, this is oh, this is so great. I love it. And you're like doing everything you can to be polite. But not that like you can sit and and sip on this and enjoy. You, you what do you think, son? You wanna? No, thanks. I appreciate it. So you could have it. Think about this. Like I, I don't know if anybody likes um like if you like a porter or a stout. Mm -hmm. Have it as a as a handshake for for Ooh. that, or or just a little like half and half or some creamer with it. You can do all kinds of things. So. See now I I like see now I like amaretto in my coffee. Yeah. Do you do an amaretto? Let's ask that question. Do you do an amaretto? We don't. Okay. We I don't. gotta ask. Because I just like amaretto. I have like two or three bottles. You know what? I, it's funny. So vodka is a funny thing for me. So I don't, like going back to that for a minute, I don't drink a lot of it. But it always seems like everyone's go-to. And, and I'm just thinking like, like I would rather, like I, I enjoyed that. You know, after, after it was in something and it created like the pepper for me. But the other thing is I really like the vanilla bean and, yep. and we're going to get into this liqueur, but I got to ask you, like, you're not, you're not coming into the market with, you know, here's my really special granddaddy's recipe for whatever liquor you're, you're coming in the house with a full suitcase of things. What, you know, you did, how many years did you do Roger? Uh, five. What? So you did five years in the army. Yeah. What were you doing after that? So uh, I went to graduate school and then I did 20 years in corporate planning, basically. So, so where does, how do we go from corporate planning yeah. to, to this? Cause this is, I mean, this is no, no bullshit. This is legit, good, high quality. Again, I, we used to joke around in the service. You remember them days of military special was the yeah. the jug was about this big yeah. and made of plastic. And you could, you know, for yeah. three bucks, you could get any liquor you wanted. Yeah. So, so where do, how do we get into this level of craft? Like, were you always doing stuff at the house? What, what nope. happened here? Not at all. So, uh, so I actually, I grew up, honestly, I grew up, I moved around a lot as a kid. I grew up. I, I grew up poor, frankly, and I joined the military as a way out. And uh, I got my undergrad in two and a half years at night school in service, went and got my uh, graduate degree and then spent 20 years building a career in corporate planning. Um, and towards the end, I was living in Dallas, commuting back to Jacksonville, where my wife and kids and her family are, are in the area. And uh, the company I worked for said, you got to move. And I took my Floridian wife to Dallas and she gave the input on that idea that I, that I, need. and you know, when you're, when you're young, you are the job, the job is you. And you just, you don't even act, you know, I mean, you just, you're thankful for that. But we were at a point where we, you know, especially with kids, we just felt like there were some other things we really had to be responsible in thinking about what our, what, what was the best situation. And so we kind of arm wrestled. And like most things in our household, whether it's, oh, my wife's on. So, sorry. What, <laughs> what, what's the color of the tell, room? Tell me all, Roger. Tell it all. Heather what, will never know. Right. What are we going to do next? You know, eventually she won. And, uh, and I said, you know, I'll leave that career, that thing, that, all that identity in me um, to do something else. But it has to be meaningful. It has to be something for the rest of my life that I'm interested in and I want to enjoy. And, uh, and so we talked about a lot of ideas and, um, all of the ideas were kind of craftsmanship oriented, whether it was woodworking and, um, we looked at beer, but there's a lot of beer out there, um, oh, yes. done for a long time and more people will do it. So I don't want to rain on anybody's parade, but, but six years ago when we were talking about it, um, 
there are only a couple hundred craft distilleries in, in the U S and, and I, God knows I drank enough liquor. So, you know, I knew, I knew that, but I didn't know anything else. And so I, you know, I brought the idea up to her and she said, well, how do I know you're not going to blow something up or blind somebody? I mean, the idea sounds good, but what are you doing. And so, uh, I looked around, I, you know, I, I, I played with some things in our garage. I did start a fire. I mean, it wasn't pretty. And then uh, I came upon this this uh, outfit in um, Europe, and they made small scale automated professional distilling equipment. Uh, and I and they did consulting. And I came back to her and I was like, "Hey, you know, I want to go see this place um, and and see if this is like for real." And she said, "You should you should go because the idea is good, and I don't want to move to Dallas." So I I said, "That's great." Because I bought a ticket to Amsterdam. And she said, let me get this right. I don't want to move to Dallas. And now my husband's going to Amsterdam to make booze with somebody we don't know. And I said, yes. yes. And <laughs> everything there is to know about alcohol production. And so that was the beginning. And I brought a little, I mean, technically, you're not allowed to distill. So I'm saying theoretically, I brought a, uh, uh, a little 13-gallon fully automated fractional column still back into our uh basically our laundry room. And I ran that thing for a year plus while I built out the first distillery and we launched with two products. And today we've got 17 different ones in, in wow. different locations of sizes. And like I said, our first four year aged and we got some rum that's five and, you know, I mean, so it's, you know, it's all just a one step at a time. And, and, and the final kind of push was, you know, I said, we're, we're reasonably successful people. You know, we're, we're not dumb and we, we, we care and we try hard and we're, we're certainly hard workers. We, we should be successful at something else we try. There's no reason to think that we can't. And we may, we may start in a dark room and bump our toes on, uh, you know, as we find our way to the light switch, but, but we're going to find it. And I think that that's exactly how we felt the whole time. It's a super hard, very competitive business, but you know, we don't need to take over the world. You know, I had a, I had a, I had a job where I fought for money and power and title. And now I'm just trying to make booze that people enjoy. It's actually, it's way more rewarding in that sense. So. Sounds a lot more relaxing. Oh God. It's so much harder. It's so much hard work, but, it, but the reward is so much more gratifying. You know, I, I joke, they used to give me both Saturday and Sunday off every week. And they do that. <laughs> But at the same time, I get to come in at eight something at night and drink booze and, you know, and, and, and enjoy the fruits of the labor. So it doesn't sound like a bad gig to me. It's not so, a bad gig. So Chris and I had the same kind of question. I don't think I've ever met anyone that went to Amsterdam for booze. <laughs> hmm. well 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 the the u.s pot industry is you know following yet still so i mean i won't close out <laughs> your career changes but uh, uh look uh, i've talked to pe so many people about that that that's a whole show in and of itself i actually got a guy here in a, in a few weeks that that's what he he advocates for he, he's like a like a lobbyist for yeah. for that industry yeah but you know it, it's I'm learning more and more about these different spirits and, and what's out there and how people get into it. I find this and the other side to this with you that I find completely fascinating is that you, you know, you had kind of hit the you you had hit a stride. If you were 20 years into a field, companies telling you we want to send you out to Dallas, normally that means they're they're moving you into bigger and better. So, I mean, I got to give it to you, brother. That takes big cojones to just turn around and say, nope, not only am I not going to stay in a field that I know that I can be successful in, yeah. I'm going to make a hard left and do something that seems like, not even that you were into, yeah. it, it seemed like it would be fun. Yeah, Bro, That takes a lot. Thanks. I, jo I joke, there's a fine line between brave and stupid, and I'm still deciding which, <laughs> which is the line. But, but you know, to, to, to be fair, we only get so many turns around the sun. And I, I had done what I did before, and I was good at it, and I knew I was good at it. And so, you know, I think a lot of people, you, you grow up, you do what your parents tell you to do, then you do the things they think they, they, that, that they, you know, what, what you think they should, would want you to do at some point in your young adult. And then from then on, you just keep taking the next best door in your life. And this really 
opening a distillery in a small business, this was a chance for me to make my first independent decision. And I'm so grateful for that. Even if, I mean, we, you know, we're successful, to be honest. We, we have a solid uh, platform. We make a lot of really good spirits. We're the number one thing to do in a tourist destination on TripAdvisor. It's a lot of good things that we really? built. Really? Out of nothing. Yes. Hold on. But, now, that's, I, I got to pause you for a second. Like, I'm going to tell you, folks, Fernandina's got a beautiful beach. That's a beautiful area to be down in in Florida. It's a great but, place. To be the number one destination. That's monstrous. That's huge. Well, we, we give we, we you know we give free booze and samples, and we have restrooms. So you know, and air conditioning in Florida. So those are three pluses for us. But <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that man! He hits all hits all of it. Air conditioning, restrooms, man, that's everything you need. Right. That's, that's like hitting the hitting the lottery in Florida. Yeah, but and even if you fail, I personally. We'll never, I mean, we've already won. My wife and I, we've developed, we've, we, we now own this, right? So it's not, it's a veteran owned business because of me. It's a female mm -hmm. owned business because of her. And I don't do my thing and she doesn't do hers. We do this thing together. And, uh, and so we've, we've bonded um, as a couple in a family. And so all, there's all these ancillary things that come with owning a small business that have been super um, fulfilling beyond just making good, good spirits. So. So now, I, while you were talking, we broke open the blossom. Ah, uh, so on the nose, that's it's good, right? It really, it like again. So, so one of the things I'm really noticing in, in what you have, it feels like Florida. Yeah, I, I don't know any other way to put it. So, like, just kind of going around the table here. When I drank the pepper, uh, it's heat. It's Florida. It's that Latin heat, Florida kind of vibe. You then have this espresso bean rum. You know, you already got the islands down there. And now you got this espresso, which has a very Cuban kind of vibe to it because it's a coffee thing. And this is very uh, Florida, the orange groves. The, you know, the vibe is there, brother. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I think that's the beauty of what's going on in craft spirits. Like it, it's very, I, I'm, I'm definitely dig like, again, I feel like this is something I could sit down a cocktail, either, either straight or a cocktail made out of this yeah. sitting down. So I want to, I'm going to make a, a, a slight, right. Hopefully we'll see if Heather's listening. Um, so how many, how long have you been in Jacksonville? So we were living North of here in Southern Georgia for nine years. And we've been here for living here for Four to five years. Okay, so you wouldn't have never been to Shades then. Never mind. We're good. Heather. He oh, is Heather from Jacksonville? She's from Inverness. So right around here. So Heather, if you're still listening, have you ever been to Shades? Let's see. So that's the only club I was ever in in Jacksonville, Florida, and it was a very unique experience that, uh, again, off air, we could have this conversation. <laughs> but uh, Shades... Yeah. Shade, well, I'll put it to, so Shades is the only club I've ever been into. And I was, Florida does like a lot of other places. Did what she say? Five years here and Amelia Island. Okay. So, like, Florida is like North Carolina. You have the, you could be 18 to go into bars. You just can't drink. You can dance in the clubs and do all those kind of things. Like, North Carolina has that. So, I was like 19 years old and this club was called Shades. You have to look it up. The one side of it was a male review. <laughs> the other side of it was a female review. And in the middle of it was a bar. So the female strip side stayed that way all night long. But when the club was done, or when the male review was done, they pulled back a giant curtain and opened up the dance floor. And here's 19-year-old me with a nothing but women that were disappointed in seeing me after they had seen this review. And I was okay with it completely. <laughs> I, I would like to know if Heather's been to Shades. <laughs> <laughs> Do not let this be somehow where I started a problem. No, it's not. Uh, but I was just there, like, so so what's the next step here? So we've got we've got a tasting room, we've got everything else. We, we've got these great spirits, 17 different ones over at Marlin and Barrel. People can find them. Now, are we 
how long is it going to just stay as a as a Florida Florida Southern Georgia kind of thing? When when are we going to see this other places? So it's a good question. So uh, we've just opened this new facility. It's thirteen thousand square feet. We we uh, we're producing. We have the tasting bar. So last year, especially with COVID, I mean it's it's monumental to still be here, frankly, and um, and opening this place, which we own. So it's a, a huge accomplishment for us. Uh, in in this year, we look forward to expanding into one or two more states. And the thing is about expansion is, you know, it's one thing to ask a uh, a bar or a liquor store to buy one case or two cases and uh, ship it off. But the reality is we have to be, you know, we're responsible. We feel like we're responsible for the success of those bottles. So we have to um, do the things, marketing and promotions and sales wise to make sure that those who who take a chance on us as a new brand and a new product are successful. And so that takes resources. And so, you know, the, the new way to build a business in America is to, you, you don't even call it money, you raise capital and, uh, and you raise a bunch of it and then you build, build whatever your thing is out and you open. But the old way to build business, and I think a craftsman way, and maybe the way my grandfather would have built a business is bottom up. And so Heather and I are building this one earned dollar at a time, and um, and we scale our expenses to our income, and we save for rainy days, and we make the best spirits we can, and we're patient with the things we have in the barrel. And over time, I feel like when we provide the experiences that we provide and the tours, and we're part of the community the way that we are, that um, that will be rewarded. Uh, with the continued opportunity to expand. And that's, that's how we look at the business. See, I love it. Like that's, <clears throat> you know, that, that's because you, you care. This is, this isn't, Hey, we're trying to build this up so we can turn around and we can sell it and we can move on to the next thing. Yeah, no, It's not like a, like a PE type thing, or you're just trying to, to build it and run away and, and, you know, create the brand and sell it off to like a, um, uh, a, a Seagram's or somebody like that to come in and have your name. But right. you know, other than that, there's no element to it. I, I love it. I mean, this is a very unique and these are unique flavors. I, I'll tell you right now, I've never, you know, probably the only thing similar is like you and I talked about was the, the vanilla bean espresso. But yeah. other than that, I, I've never tasted these type of flavors with these kind of, uh, kind of drinks there. I just, like I said, this blossom, you know, it's a little, it's a little fruity. I'll, I'll be a little fruity for a minute. I'll be all right. Be okay. Well, we see, we see the cellos in like, think of it with um, like a boosted mimosa ah. or our orange cello instead of uh triple second, your margarita or in an old fashioned. I mean, we see it used in cocktails because it is sweet. You can taste the sweetness, no, but yeah. not syrupy. And, and so, and so it can get put into a variety of cocktails. You know, the lemon lime here is like a, a boozy Mountain Dew. I mean, it's all kind of, um, I love it. A boozy Mountain Dew. I love, I love the sound of it already. Who doesn't like that? You know, you, you can, you can go ahead and get that boost of energy and fall down all at the same time. <laughs> we call that Friday night. Oh, I might have to, you know. I have to find a way to make make a road trip. We we bought an RV this year, so we'll we'll have to load the RV up and make make a trip down there. I can stop. I can blink and get through Callahan and Hilliard and see my family, you know. And uh, we'll make bring our way. Them. Bring What's them that? Them. Oh bring yeah, we'll, we'll we'll bring them all. That you have no idea. Like this, uh, my mother is one of nine. Oof, oof. And uh, and we our our family go that side of the family goes from. I actually have an uncle that lives in Sturgis, like uh. lives in Sturgis, not like, oh, I, I live in the Dakotas. No, no, no. We, he lives there. Um, so yeah, I, we cover from all the way out there, all the way, all the way to Florida. My dad's side, I actually used to have family down in Miami, but yeah, we'll have to, uh, I would love to make a trip out there. Now, is there any thoughts? And this just kind of crossed my mind because you're talking about all these things that this pairs well with. What about like a restaurant or, or a food service or anything like that? So um, we have in this new facility, a um, we've got a large lot 
th that we own that's adjoining the building. And then there's another uh, piece of the building, a separate entity, a separate address and everything. And so we've always thought that we're going to, when we bought this, have a um, indoor outdoor bar. And so you can come, you can play games, you can watch the game, you can do whatever. And we're still kind of defining the specifics of that, but really make this property a com more complete destination. Um, but, you know, the easiest thing to knock a company off course is to overinvest in the wrong thing. So we want to just make sure that we are ironclad in our thoughts, that the investment and the spend is sized with the opportunity and that we do it right. So we, you know, we just opened, we're still working on that piece, but you know, ultimately, I mean, we're on an Island. There's only so many outdoor areas to recreate. And I think, I think the investment, um, holds a lot of promise. So. See, I, I love like little tapas, little, little tacos or something like that. Yeah. You know, a fire extinguisher for that vodka, for it bust your ass. You could sell toilet. Like, Oh God. Like I'm telling you folks that like, kicked me right in the taste buds like that was a that one was brutal like i needed the the blossom just to kind of cool it down after all that the sweet and the heat we we know a, there's a restaurant that does a ceviche with the, the vodka actually you know really that's yeah, a good it's a good flavor additive to it so i love ceviche so Ce, ceviche is because anything seafood i'm down for it yeah i actually had uh do you ever you ever watch uh oh god uh Get them to, to get the alligator hunter guys. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. the one that always wears overalls is I follow a page on Facebook called Southern Boys. Mm -hmm. So, I actually it's the only time this has ever happened to me where I made a comment on, on a thread and it went out of control. So, I commented on, on the thread, uh, that the only way to eat crabs is to steam them. That's it. Huh. That boiling, I don't care where you're at and who's listening. Yeah. If you boil crabs, just throw them out. Stop wasting your money. That's unacceptable. You have garbage those blue crabs. Yeah. That is, it's a fact. Yeah. <clears throat> so I made a comment that the only way to uh, eat crabs was to steam them. And uh, you'd have thought that I was starting the next civil war. <laughs> on this guy's website, like people are like, you're out of your mind. You Yankees don't know. And I'm like, you don't know geography. If you're calling me a Yankee, you don't know geography. Yeah. I yeah. live South of the Mason Dixon. No, those are, those are fighting words though. Oh God. I was like, I was like boiling crabs is garbage. Like, yeah. oh. see, but I, I just, I'm really enjoying this. Like this is, I've lucked out. I am so happy. I've done this distiller series and I'm so happy you guys came on with us. Because, you know, at this point, I have a lot of places so far to travel across the country and just get uh, good and toasty, stay, stay warm without a blanket. Yeah. It's, you know what, so, uh, so let me just make a quick comment. Yeah, please. Small beer has been going on for like 25 years. And, and when it started, the playing field was open. I think America makes the best beer now because we've had all this space and opportunity but before then, what, what was an exotic beer? Heineken? You know, we just right. did. And now we've got like barrel aged sours. I mean, it's really amazing what okay. happened in the beer world. And the same 20 or 25 years behind beer, but the same thing is going to happen with spirits. We do not have the same opportunity because there's a lot of really good alcohol out there. Really great bourbons, really great everything. But who's making a tangerine cello like what you just tasted? Yeah, right? And so it's not just me. I mean, I mean, there's 2,000 plus distilleries out there, and we're not all in the same place at the same time. But great things are going to come from the community of distillers that are that are working on this thing right now in America. And I think it's super exciting to be a part of it. Well, well, you said it with with the bourbon. I, I would love when when the bourbon's ready ready to bottle. Let me know. Uh, I'll Venmo it to you. I would love to try it because I I'm not. I'm just starting to get into the bourbon piece to things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I talked about this before. That's that's the most highly regulated product in the United States is bourbon. Yeah. No, nothing is more regulated by the FDA than bourbon. And that blows my mind. But there's this thing, whole thing with it. And, and you can talk to this. Is It took you four years to be able to say, I can open this cask. Yeah. Now you start getting into the next piece. And it, what is it? 21 years for an aged bourbon? Is that what it is? So, so 
the thing on aged bourbon has actually changed over time. So bourbon, bourbon was America's number one selling spirit, let's say in the 80s. And then vodka and flavored vodkas came out in the 90s and 2000s. And they, they actually sh- shut some rickhouses, closed down production, you know, squeezed bourbon out, out of bars to some degree. Oh, wow. When bourbon was popular before vodka, if you had an aged bourbon over eight years, it was too old. There's a, I think a lot of people consider a sweet spot somewhere around six to eight years. At two years of age, you can call it a straight, straight bourbon. If you make it with rye, straight rye, straight, straight for whatever the spirit, for whatever the grain is. But straight bourbon at two years. At four years, you do not have to put an age statement. You don't have to tell people on the label how many years it's been aged. Anything younger, the youngest drop under four years, you have to disclose that on a label. But I think the government basically feels like after four years, it's properly aged. If you want to, you can put it. You don't have to. Do what you need to do. Right. So for us, having a four year product, an NAS, no age statement is a, is a really big deal. But there are all kinds of derivatives this go around with bourbon that are super exciting, like secondary cask offerings. So finished in a port barrel, finished in a toasted barrel, double oak, all kinds of cool things. And so, you know, we're deciding what to do with the stock we have that is properly aged. And um, I think it's, you know, it's a big deal for a small company to get to that point. We're actually just proud to have i mean there's so few florida straight bourbons and um you know we're we're one of those and for this little community i mean you know we we did it and it's got our our city name on it so that's awesome yeah we're happy that that's so you know and it, it's just so unique your your area compared to up here see so I, i'm here you have so many different fruits up here um the gentleman we had from newcastle a lot of apple stuff. Yeah. Apple in this area where we're at used to be the number one um, hops grower in mm. the uh, entire country. Mm. And we got beat up during uh, Prohibition and they had some other stuff, but it's all coming back because like Brewery Oma Gang is up here. Yeah. For beer side to it. Yeah. So to see you, and that's their big thing is, you know, they're still trying to keep with local products, but to see you doing it is so impressive. And, and staying true to your roots and staying true to that Fernandina area. Folks, when you look at these bottles, it's right there. It's Florida, you know? You know, it, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive, you know, the entire, entire piece to it. And, and I love it. So right now, if somebody wanted to go out and they wanted to find Marlin and Barrel, what do they got to do to find Marlin and Barrel? Well, they can come here, of course. Um, but we also have a, um, a, a vendor we work with, caskcartel.com, and uh, they're a liquor store, and they ship to almost every state in the union. So uh, if they're interested, caskcartel.com. Spell that out. Cast, cartel. C-A-S-K-C-A-R-T-E-L.com. So you tell me if I spelled that right when it comes scrolling across the screen here. Let's see. And there we go. Is that proper? Cast yep. Cartel? Yeah. All right, folks. So you can find it on Cast Cartel. What if they wanted to find you on social media? What are we looking for here? Yep. We're on uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram. So, um, you know, Facebook, I guess, forward slash Marlin Barrel. And, um, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see all our, our quirky, quirky behavior there as well. So who are you allowed to touch the Instagram? Uh, I do some, <laughs> we, we have to, well, I actually got a TikTok recently and I'm thinking like I'm doing these great TikTok videos and I'm not. Yeah. And then my wife does like one duet video. I had her do one. Yeah. Blows. She's got 7,000 views. My yeah. wife is a beautiful woman. Uh, you know, everything about her. I, I love it. Love her. But she's got like 7,000 views off of one video <laughs> and here, and here I am like, doing these videos and thinking I'm doing some shit. And then she just like, she's she, and it's a video of her reacting to a video. It's if, not even her doing anything. If I could just make a recommendation, give your wife some of our tangerine cello and then ask her to do a TikTok video, video with it. <laughs> well, she's watching right now. Cause I know her. So uh-huh. you, you heard that dear, um, the tangerine cello is down here and we will see how that all, all works out. So we've got 
We can find you on Cast and Cartel if we're not in the area. Hopefully your state will have it delivered to you. You can always go down to Fernandina. I recommend you go down to Fernandina. It's a beautiful area. I enjoy it down there. You can find the you can find these guys, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all all the different pieces. If you're if you've enjoyed this show though, and you, whatever platform you're listening, we always ask you to hit that like button. You can find us on Facebook at the Above the Bar Podcast. Our Twitter is at the at Above the Bar Four. Our Instagram is the Above the Bar Podcast. Uh, you can send us a message on uh, Gmail, which is the Above the Bar Podcast at gmail.com. And we still got the contest going on that sooner or later somebody other than me will buy one of my pieces of merchandise because <laughs> right now I'm the only person that buys them. But if you go ahead and you buy one of the pieces of merchandise, take your picture with the hashtag the Above the Bar Podcast, we will go ahead and the winner, after I have more than one person do it, will I'll send you a gift bag. Also, make sure you check out the other shows on our new network. If you didn't realize it, we are now networked with the Earplug Network. Uh, the Podfather asked us to join, so we're on the Earplug Network. So this show will be heard all across that entire network on SoundCloud. You can find us, Earplug Network. Any final pa- final words there, Roger? It's on you. You know what? We just we're grateful to be a part of the whole craft distilling movement that's going on. And I would just ask everybody out there to support local support craft. And uh, and, uh, you know, there's more to the world than big brands. So when you support local, you support yourself. Love it. Support local, support yourself. All right, folks, be sure to push your stool in.